Now, so far we've put in all of these commands on R1, and we need to put in the exact same commands on R3 here. So we can open up R3. We can go to Preferences, Font Size, and set the font size to 18 so that it's easier to see. We can type Enable to get to Privilege Mode, Conf T to get to Global Config, and then go through the same set of commands that we did before. So we could say Security Passwords. All right. Okay, so I'm putting in the commands one by one. Um, that's the commands for line console zero. And I'll put line VTY. I'm going to skip line auxiliary because we don't really use it. So I'm going to just skip the auxiliary line. And I'll say line VTY zero space four password Cisco. And I'm going to also um, put in the login command. So now I have basically um, both routers configured to the same point. Now the next command that they wanted us to know is the service password encryption command. So I'm going to go back to R1 to talk about it. So for the service password encryption command what happens is if I type um, control C on the keyboard, get back to privilege mode here, regular prompt. If I do a show running dash config is the full command here, it'll show us the configuration file. You can see that our enable secret password has been encrypted with MD5 encryption, which is a fairly strong encryption, right? But if I hit the spacebar to, to go more, and then spacebar again more, the spacebar again more, you'll see that line console zero, the password is in clear text. You can see password and you can see my password Cisco. And then line auxiliary zero, password Cisco, you can see it clearly and also the virtual terminal lines, password Cisco. So what you can do is you could say configure terminal to get to global config mode and type in this command service password encryption right all right and let's see here service password let's see here and service its password dash encryption so two things the command had a hyphen and I put an I instead of a Y here so I'll do service password encryption, then do control C, and then do a show run, running configuration, and you'll see that not only is the enable secret um, password, which gets us to privilege mode, um, encrypted, but also, I'm hitting the space bar now, line console zero is now encrypted with a type seven encryption on the passwords for the console, the auxiliary, and for the virtual terminal lines are also encrypted. Now, I may need to reverse this before I save my configuration files and exit my session if I want to come back into my session. When we load the configuration files, they need to load in cleanly so that we can connect to our devices and actually, you know, actually connect to them for real. So what I'm going to do is, I've got to remember now, I'm not going to, for one, I am not going to put this no service pass this service password encryption command on R3. I'll just leave it on R1 and that way I'll just remember to reverse it before I save my session. 
So the next um, command that we need to enter in securing our routers, since we've put in some encryption here on the enable secret on these passwords, and uh, we've put a password minimum length. We're supposed to do 10 characters, but we did five. We're going to do conf t and put a banner message of the day. So why is a banner message of the day part of securing the router? Well, it's a warning to intruders, uh, almost like a legal statement saying, hey, you're not allowed to be in here. You're given a warning and you hacked in and so you were violating, you, you know, bypassing warning. So anyway, it's essentially going to be used as a warning. So we'll say banner, MOTD, all right, and then what we'll do is we'll put in between dollar signs, we'll say the message, which would be something like this, unauthorized access is strictly forbidden and then you would finish it off here with a legal statement or whatever that you'll be prosecuted by the f to the full extent of the law if you um, try to connect into this router without authorization etc etc now the banner message of the day needs to start with something like a dollar sign and it could be a pound sign or question mark and then it needs to end with that same sign so I put in the same sign a dollar sign at the end and hit enter and now the banner and the message of the day is everything between the two the two dollar signs. So if I do a control C and then let's say let's exit out of the router. Okay, we'll exit out of the router. I'll press return to get started. Notice that here is our message right here. Unauthorized access is strictly forbidden. Picked up my quotation mark, but I didn't put one at the beginning, so that's funny. Anyway, um, I'll put in the password which is Cisco. Hit enter and now I'm into the router. I'll type EN, which is short for enable, and I need to put in the password class, and so now I'm into the router again. Now, I'm not going to put a banner message of the day on R3, just to kind of move along fast, but the um, curriculum recommends that you do the same thing on both R1 and R3, so basically on this router and then on this router, but I'm not going to do that so that we can move along. It's not a deal breaker if it doesn't have a banner message of the day on R3. So what I'm going to do now is talk about the next level of security, conf t to get to global config mode, and that is to move beyond just a password to get into the router and go towards uh, usernames and passwords, which is enhanced form of security to have a username and a password because then you can set up multiple administrators with different levels of authorization. So for instance, if I go to global config mode, which I did by typing conf t or configure terminal, I can say username and then I could say user 01, right? And then I could say password and then put in a question mark and you'll see that if I follow it with a zero, it'll be an unencrypted password. If I follow it with a seven, it'll be a, probably a type seven password right type 7 encryption right for password um, so I'll, what I'll do is I'll put in 0 and then I'll put in the password of Cisco okay so user 01 password 0 Cisco so now what I should have is is I should have a username named 01 and a password Cisco and I've said to make it in unencrypted but since we use the service password encryption command earlier all passwords on the router will be encrypted with a type 7 password with a type 7 encryption let's see if that's the case so we'll do control C and we'll do a show run and you'll see if I hit enter username user 01 password type 7 encryption and there's the type 7 encryption so it didn't it basically encrypted our uh, password anyway because of that service password encryption we put on earlier Let's see if we can find it. It's up here somewhere. Ah, there it is. Service password encryption. Right in our running configuration file, you can see the command. Notice how it's before everything else so that it encrypts everything coming afterwards. Okay. Um, so that worked out nicely. Let's make a second user. This time we'll do it differently. We'll say user name. And this is just following, once again, the, the curriculum uh, guideline, the step-by-step -step guide username we'll say user 02 and then this time we'll say secret 
and then we'll also use just the word Cisco, right? So username user02, secret Cisco, we'll hit enter, and now this will be a secret password, which will, I believe, give it the MD5 encryption. Let's test it out. Control C, show run for show running config, and hit, and there it is, username, user2, secret, MD5 encrypted, and notice the encryption is longer. It also has uh, special characters, capital letters, lowercase letters, and numbers. Um, much stronger form of encryption. So this would be preferable for your users, uh, your username and passwords, uh, your passwords for your users. So, all right. Now, right now, when we um, exit out of the router, right, and get back into the router, it only asks us for a password still, right? So we could just type in Cisco, and it doesn't ask us for a username, right? Well, if we want to use user, if we want to activate the ability to log in with a username and a password, then what we need to do is, once again, I'm going to global config mode. We have to go into line console zero, and instead of using the login command, we're going to use the login local command. And by doing that, it's going to tell us that, hey, when we log in, use the local database, the local database of username and passwords to log in. So let's give it a try. We'll do control C. We'll do an exit. And then we'll hit return to get started. And you'll see now it's asking me for a username. So now I could type in user02 and then the password Cisco. And I'm in. I still have to put in the enable password of class to get to privileged user mode.